Welcome to British Ants. Uh, here we're setting up a um, tank for uh, Acromimix octospinosis, which is a species of leaf cutter ant. Uh, we've got our atters set up in this um, kind of these kind of tanks now. Uh, we ordered these quite a while ago. Uh, when they arrived, unfortunately, they weren't saleable. Um, so here you can see that I'm trying to peel off all the um, grubby finger marks and uh, acrylic um, the sealant that was left kind of splattered all over the the tanks when they were sent out uh, these were supposed to be by a prof professional company um, but they <clears throat> quite clearly were not up to our standards so we're using those kind of behind the scenes to uh, house colonies in um, this is a colony uh, of leaf cutters that we've been selling for quite a while now um, and I've, I've kept one aside which I've decided to keep for myself. Um, I have two colonies. I have the Queen Elizabeth uh, or the QE2 colony which is the original Atta colony that features on quite a few of the other videos. Uh, we haven't got a name for this one but it's an Acromimix. Uh, I find them generally less fussy to feed. They'll pretty much take anything. So we're just cleaning the tank up with a razor blade to get those sealant marks off. Uh, I speeded the video up. So it's quite a quite a lengthy process. So I'll try to shorten that. Uh, I'm applying really small amounts of our anti-slip. Um, this won't be 100% um, effective because I've applied it with a cotton wool bud. Um, it's just a temporary kind of stop gap to, to keep the majority of the colony in there. Um, the anti-slip is usually better applied with um, a paintbrush or we've got new pens which will be featuring on the website in a couple of days. Uh, our anti-slip pens which is basically a marker pen um, that you um, run around your tank and does the same job really. And it's all clean and simple but we'll do a video of those separately. Um, so that's uh, soil um, that's been sterilized. So I was going to put the soil in the tank. Uh, Acromimix do quite well with soil, but it's what I will do is put that in the outworld, dampen it down, and then the ants will move uh, that into the enclosure should they wish to increase the humidity. So it's about supplying the ants with the materials that they need. So just messing around with all the little fittings here. Uh, these fittings are all available on the website. Um, those are 20 millimeter um, brackets. So you just drill a hole in a tub. Um, it could be anything from a, a plastic ice cream tub. And then you just fit those. And it gives you uh, a connection to be able to put the rigid tubes in. Uh, we use 20 millimeter tubes for the leaf cutters. Um, we find that using larger tubing, uh, that the, the leaf cutters will actually move the fungus into the tubes. So by keeping them at 20, uh, 20 millimeter, there's enough room for them to get their leaves through, but not enough that they're going to start setting up shop. So. So here we are, uh, here's the colony. Um, we've housed it in these basically beta fish tanks. Uh, very small, they're oval, opal shaped. So any moisture that um, collects in there can run down the sides rather than drip onto the fungus. Uh, these have worked out actually very well, uh, but they are what they are really. Um, we've had them in the open tray, or as we call them, landscape trays. Originally, of course, this colony, the uh, coffee table colony because it's been sat on the coffee table uh, we add food in, in the tray and the ants seem quite happy. The fungus has actually done very well. Uh, this is always the messy bit when you've got a bit of uh, quite a chunky bit of fungus. The ants invariably will as always go completely stir crazy so it's trying to get that fungus out in one piece which seemed to have worked. Top tip, don't leave the spoon um, in the enclosure because it acts like a bridge and as you can see they are up 
and over it. We we'll come back to the uh, to the rest of that. There's a few loose ones running around. I always find handling the um, leaf cutters with rubber gloves on is quite good because you can pick the ants up without actually uh, causing them any any damage. So paint brushes always invaluable. Uh, that's my trusty paintbrush, and I pretty much use that uh, those kind of brushes on most of my colonies. Again, it's a great way of picking the ants up without causing them damage. removing the debris with a pair of large tweezers. It's all the stuff that I don't want in there. The fungus has previously sat on um, clay balls, which is a great way to start a leaf color, uh, leaf colony off. Um, keeps the humidity up around them. It's worth noting that this um, species prefer a temperature of about 24.4 Celsius. Um, this colony I've had now for a number of months. When it arrived, it was the size of um, a broad bean. So it has grown quite well. Um, this colony hasn't been heated at all. Um, it's been kept in the ant room at about 20, 20 Celsius. Uh, can go down to about 19 uh, and it's done very well. Uh, with the leaf cutter colonies, I find that if you apply too much heat and you haven't got the settings right, you'll dry that fungus out almost within hours. So if you're starting off with a leaf cutter colony, um, I wouldn't be too um, quick to up those temperatures. Keep them, uh, keep them on, slightly on the cooler side. It means that there, if there are any problems that you can keep an eye on them um, and things won't depreciate so much that you won't be able to do something about it. Um, we're using our tape here, uh, a new tape that we're trialling, um, it's impregnated with our anti slip so it's a deterrent, so they hopefully shouldn't chew through this. Um, we've been testing it out on our Atter colony for uh, a month now and it seems to have worked quite well. So the tank, once sealed with this, only has a 20 millimeter hole in the side and in the top. Um, as this fungus is quite small for this tank, we'll seal the top up. So we'll put a stop end in the top uh, for a couple of months. Um, any gas should escape through the hole through the side so it won't build up. And this is something that we've tested with our pods in the past too much air running through the um, the colony or through the fungus again will dry it out and set it back so by placing the holes halfway up it means that you're getting enough air circulation in there but not so much that it's uh, drying the fungus out so there's the stop end so it's just a blank end on top so they can't get out we have um, filter um, inserts that fit into that white part that I first applied to the tank. So you can just pull that tube out and just pop a, a small silver disc, which is vented, and that just pops straight in. So as the fungus grows, uh, obviously the carbon dioxide that the fungus will be giving off will be increased. So we'll um, do that. But again, small fungus, small fungus needs small tub. So. If I put a, a small piece of fungus in a, a large container, then it's going to dry out. So I'm going to be feeding them from the landscape tray. So we're just going to basically run a tube down onto that platform 
um, we'll paint the outside of the tube with the anti-slip so they can't climb on the outside of the tube. So the only way they can access or use the tube is internally. It's worth noting that if you're new to our channel, um, yeah, I suggest that you subscribe. We've got a number of offers coming up uh, throughout 2018 where we'll be giving away formicariums um, and that applies to anyone. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can enter uh, by subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Uh, we'll also have colonies uh, that we'll be giving out uh, and featuring throughout the year. Uh, obviously with those we are restricted to the EU, um, so, but we'll, we'll let, you, let you know. So any of the live colonies that we um, give away in our competitions will be EU only I'm afraid. But the sundries and formicariums, um, we'll be happy to ship those. So it's definitely worth subscribing. And, uh, and again, you can ask any questions. We'll try and get back as soon as possible um, and answer any questions you have. So if you've got any questions about what we're doing, pop them below and we'll try and answer them. When this colony does grow to quite a large um, state, so when it's filled up, at least half of that um, unit will then attach another cube to the other end and we'll increase the outworld space. But for the time being, this is more than ample. So here we are, a bit more of the anti-slip on a cotton wool bud. Again, um, this would be better applied with a paintbrush or one of our new pens, because we can get a good, good amount. Always pay special attention to the corners of um, the enclosures that you don't want the ants to escape from. Uh, corners tend to be a great, uh, great place for ants to congregate and escape. Um, so if you really want to avoid your ants escaping, uh, try round enclosures. They're much more uh, harder for ants to get a purchase on. Uh, but the the anti-slip's been tried and tested. We've been using it for a number of years now. Uh, we've recently tweaked it so that it's uh, it can keep species like Solenopsis, Invicta and Geminata in, in their place. And they're well known to be good escape artists. So we've added the soil. Um, we've popped that in. Um, we've hydrated it so that they can carry it and should they wish, block up the tunnels. So they don't always use it, but sometimes they will. Uh, we've just turfed out the contents of that container, which contains lots of ants and other bits of rubbish. We will pick those balls out um, as and when the ants settle in, um, but uh, we'll let them do their thing first. So once they find their way up through the tubes, it could take about a day before they work out where they need to be. Just a case of patience. Whenever you transfer a leaf cutter colony, you'll find that the um, ants usually won't collect leaves um, for about 24 hours. It's quite normal. Uh, as you can see, I haven't put any anti-slip on the outside of the tube. So the ants are uh, going hell for leather on it. So there we are. Pop a little ring of anti-slip. And a nice generous amount around the sides. The anti-slip always works better when it's applied to a nice clean surface.
moving the balls out of the way. <clears throat> Clay balls can come in contact with the side. That'll just make it a little bit easier for the ants to get out. So we want to kind of avoid that. It's worth noting that um, if you do use um, acrylic containers um, to put your fungus in, that they need to be at least five millimeter thick, um, and obviously the um, the joints need to be with silicon. Um, four millimeter acrylic uh, in humid conditions will warp. So if you're doing this with an acrylic container bought off eBay or some more unscrupulous people um, then there's a good chance that these ants are going to be running across your living room by about midnight so just be aware of that if in doubt it's always worth asking other people um, on our Facebook page or um, one of the other Facebook pages what they keep their colonies in um, I always think advice is better coming from someone who actually has the colony rather than someone that says they know about the colony. So try and find someone that's got a really nice successful colony of Acromymix and they'd be your point of call um, to go to for advice. So there we are, all set up. We'll remove the balls um, as and when the ants move up the tube and uh, find their place. And then we'll add some little treats. Um, maybe some protein jelly, because they do actually quite like that. Um, apple, grape, uh, things like a cuba leaves, privet, um, just to kind of encourage them. It uh, won't be too uncommon in the first few days that the ants may use uh, or create a dump chamber in the corner of the tank that they're currently in. Um, but as they establish themselves in there, they'll actually take the waste and they'll pop it in the corner of the outworld, which is the tray basically. So there we are, we've got some um, bits of fungus in there and uh, some pupae which they're running around with as soon as they work out where the fungus is all that will be transferred by the ants so it's usually best to give them everything they need and just let them get on with it anyway we'll come back to this colony in another month's time um, if you want to follow any photos of this we'll put some on the Facebook page uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, coming up, we'll be featuring our new pens and giving one away. And we'll also have a Outworld uh, that we'll be giving away in our second video. So thanks for joining us.